Ki si ke a su lang gong gong Mu so ke ma o chi chi I e ji e ju di wa yo Tu kwa si chu chu o ki Mu so gong gong ni e bu This is for Biafra. Hello my wonderful people. Good morning to you. Anywhere you are watching this video, this is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this platform and you like what we are seeing or what we are doing here, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell. To all notifications, this will enable you to know when we upload a new video. Here we react to all forms of videos. We inform, educate the members of the public about what is happening in the globe, especially in nigeria and i want to seize this opportunity to appreciate youtube oh yes for creating and managing this wonderful platform that we are using to disseminate information at the same time i keep on putting disclaimer that here in linda's tv show we do not promote misleading information hate speech violent or trying to instigate war we are only here to educate inform sanitize the members of the public they say information is power Please always take note of this. My great people, I greet you all. For the sake of those who do not understand Igbo language, the song that I played was dedicated by one of our brother, Tumazi Nandi Kano, Prime Minister, and all... So clean and, you know, in uniform. So after that, let everybody stop talking about uh, what happened in Kaduna, but we won't. And like, we will never stop talking about everything that happened everywhere. In your criminal enterprise, in the Nigeria contraption, Nigerian politicians are playing their dirty politics and power game with the lives, not just the lives of uh, the Nigerians, so they are targeting the lives of children. And they have been doing it for so long. Let me show you something. I actually showed that this afternoon uh, when we had our program this today. You see, they pay, they pay terrorists in Nigeria and they tell you to stop asking questions. They will tell you, no, we did not pay terrorists too. No, we did not pay ransom more. Yeah? We, we only, we rescued them. Now, if you rescued people, sure you get now, if you rescue somebody from uh, their kidnappers, definitely you must have, uh, you must have all their kidnappers in custody too. That is what you call rescue. Do you understand? You don't go somewhere and rescue people and the people who are guiding them with guns and the rest of that, uh, the rest of them, they are either, they are neither dead eh, nor in custody. So that is self. I want you to, in your mind right now, okay? Everywhere you see them use the word rescue. Eh? If not, cost, you can cost them, cost them and do that, okay? But right now in your mind, okay, remove that word rescue and replace it with ransom. Do you understand? Ransom. And uh, listen, since uh, just between 2019 and 2024, guys, eh, they have kidnapped. These are the numbers of uh, mass kidnappings that have taken place, okay? So let's count them. In 2019, you have 19, we have 19 uh, mass kidnappings. This is not 19 people, 19 different kidnappings that took place. So then in 2020, you had uh, 59 kidnappings that took place. So if you add uh, that, that's going to be how much? Uh, that's going to be like uh, 78. So 78. Now, these are like the recorded ones, though, not the ones they didn't record. Though. So 78 plus uh, uh, 153. Mm -hmm. So that should uh, take us to, I mean, 230, Abby. So 230, uh, sorry. Yeah, 231. 
231 plus uh, 160, eh? 231, one six, uh, sorry, two three one and one five uh, nine. Uh, that is a three three one and then a three uh, nine uh, zero. So three hundred and ninety, five hundred and ninety, five hundred and ninety plus uh, seventy uh, seven. That should be a uh, six hundred and sixty seven. Six hundred and sixty seven plus uh, sixty. Right on and on like that. Shall you get? That's over 700 incidents of kidnapping, mass kidnappings that took place in Nigeria under APC. But do you know something? In 2024 alone, 2024 alone, they have carried out 68 mass kidnappings. And this is just March 2024, okay? And in 2024 alone, they have already kidnapped over 1,867 people, including children, just in three months, okay? Now, if you take a look at 2023, over 4,400 Nigerians were kidnapped, including school children, okay? And if you look at 2022, over 4,194 Nigerians, including children, were kidnapped. Same in 2021, over 3,600, okay? Now, come back to 2024 on that list, all right? Just believe, just know that this is just like their official figure. I bet you it's always more than this, so you understand? Now, this is just a 20... This is just March in 2024, where the mass kidnapping itself has shown. And you know how they kind of get all the power to do all of this? Because mass kidnappings and most kidnappings in Nigeria, they are state-sponsored. The sponsor of terrorism in Nigeria, they are your state governors in, in, in northern Nigeria your senators, your rep members, and then the rest of them, including some local chiefs in northern Nigeria. Because you know one thing, right? Everyone stands to benefit. The terrorists that, were, that are harmed to be kidnapping the people, they are not acting without the protection of those who could actually deploy the real security, like, uh, you know, the real soldiers or intelligence uh, after them to actually capture these terrorists. Because they are not even hiding. Let me show you something before I continue. Okay, hang on. Let me finish that. You see, the terrorists that they are harming, they are their sons and daughters from that same part of northern Nigeria and their cousins from the Sahel. You see, those ones, they know where they exist. They know where they are. Communities where they control, in most cases, communities that cooperate with them, right? Those communities, shielding them, are known. They now come to those in authority. Those in authority who are supposed to also use the instrumentality of law to clamp down on, on this uh, jihadist and terrorist eh, and their sponsor. Rather than do that, they control the entire security apparatus and then uh, compromise them. So also, to now milk the system, majority of them are milking hundreds of millions of naira. I'm talking about... Uh, tens of billions of uh, naira every month across that region on security vote or on money paid to terrorists as ransom whenever mass kidnapping take place like this they pay the ransom they take the money from their sorry they take the money from their from their different uh, covers right and then they pay the terrorist in the name of the uh, security once the terrorists are cleared the money moves straight to the hands of the sponsor everybody gets their own share the business is concluded. They seek, I mean, the terrorists reham. They reham again, they regroup, and they go for another strike. Okay? Take another mass kidnapping. The cycle continues. And it has been like that for years now. And a lot of you are watching that. You see the level of insecurity in northern Nigeria and the level of uh, the amount of uh, resources that are being given and funneled into that. Eh? Going from the Nigeria supposed Nigeria national budget that is going into funding terrorism alone will tell you that those who said that another Nigeria is a cause on the rest of a Nigeria and why we should do everything, if not for anything at all, for the sake of our own children and break away from this contraption. If you understand how deep this is, as well as the old drama around it, where terrorists could go into a community, kidnap over 200 school children, and the community will not raise alarm. And then the entire security apparatuses in the, in the region, they will not do anything. 
And all of us will be reading the news. Oh, they are kidnapping school children now. As if to say we are watching a movie. We will watch them. We will read the news until they take the children into the forest, until they put them where they will put them in, and all of us will be waiting for their negotiation in the news. It's like a script. It's just going like that and that and that. And once the money is taken, everything is cleared, they prepare for another set, another one again. Some said it is the moment they are actually raising money to buy further weapons. I said, it is so easy, okay, to move the money from the treasury of Nigeria, from the subunits, sub which, is, which are the states, right? Move them straight into the hands of terrorists. Move them straight into the hand of militants. Move them straight into the hands of their politically, uh, you know, or, uh, created their unknown gunmen. All of these are avenue created. And this is why this so bloodlet, bloodlet, this bloodbath is never going to end. It won't end because they are making a kill from it and we are watching it. And the most saddest part of it is that uh, they do not give a damn to the point that they are also using the children, the lives of children, trauma to traumatize these children for the rest of their lives. All for what? All for this. This madness. Eh? And then once they bring them together and put uniform on them, they will begin to thank themselves. I want to say thank you to the uh, chief general. General, I want to thank uh, chief colonel, colonel, colonel. I want to thank president and this and that. And you will sit there and they will say, security is improving in Nigeria. Technumbu Bokwari, they were doing a wonderful job. They were playing and toying with the lives of your children. As if the ones they are doing to you is not enough. Your children, how far? How, how far do you think they, they are ready to go? How low do you think they are ready to sink before you react? Eh? This is what uh, Sonny the, uh, what do you call it, Sonny the Clown, this is what he had to say when he was asked that, okay, you said some children have been brought, but what about the rest? Said, no, 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 there's no other children. That is some from people who are using pol politics. Are you being serious? Who oh, go to that? Sorry. As we are speaking, the children are here in Kaduna. And of course, uh, they are here. Uh, and as we are speaking, in the next uh, few minutes, I will even be with them because I saw them earlier. Uh, they are in a very high spirit. Uh, of course, uh, the military will, will hand them over to me officially by tomorrow, but uh, still. Uh, they are here in Kaduna. I have been working closely with the military uh, to ensure that uh, we look after them. Uh, and of course, uh, we are also trying as much as possible to give them some social uh, counseling and look after them before we eventually hand them over to the families. Uh, this afternoon, the family of the children that were abducted. Uh, and now release, uh, came to the government house. I sat down with them, discussed with them, and the family are also extremely happy. Uh, so at this juncture, I would love to thank each and every one that supported us in the beginning of this uh, very unfortunate situation. I want to particularly extend my appreciation to President Aswajibola Machinibu, the National Security Advisor, the service chief, that is the chief of army staff, the chief of the air staff, the chief of the naval staff, as well as the inspector general of police and the, the director general of the SSS. All of them supported us. And I'm happy today the children are back home safely. And of course, like I said, in high spirit, we have looked at them and the, the doctors are looking after them right now. The psychologists are looking after them as well, as well as a lot of other people who are looking after them. So they are in high spirit with thank God. And of course, for me, that is more important than anything. Our children are back home separately. And we thank God. Give us an understanding. 287, those are the figures that we know that we're taking from Kuriga two weeks ago. But how many do we have? Do we have all the 287 now? There was nobody that ever confirmed that the children were 287. Of course, uh, as the governor of Kaduna said at the beginning, uh, of course, uh, you know, I visited the community. Nobody came with any specific figure, but uh, as a governor, I listened to most of the media coming up with figures, and I knew even at that time that the figures were not correct uh, because I have been interfacing with the school authority. We have the register. We have everything. We have the record.
God, you can do that. So, but you see, at that critical time, I didn't want to do an issue with anyone uh, in terms of numbers. What is more important to me as a governor is the separation of the children. But yeah, I'm happy they are back safely. They're in high spirit. But those numbers were just figment of some people's imaginations. They just went into the media and reported that the figures were that. Of course, I remember when I visited the community on that very day, uh, of course, some people within the community uh, who have no records just came out and said that uh, the figures were 287, 87. They are about. But of course, at that time, as a leader, I wouldn't, I shouldn't bother myself about figures or numbers. What is more important is the return of the children. Today, I met the, the, the families of the children. They confirmed to me the numbers given by the uh, military uh, are the correct numbers. So for me, it's more important because when some people who have no connection with the situation decided to politicize the issue, decided to try to undermine the effort of the armed forces, the security agencies. Some, of course, ignore those kind of propaganda. But today I'm happy. The families are happy. The Kandasa government is happy. We're all happy. I want to thank particularly those that pray for the separation of the children. And here we are. They are simply back. Mm. That's more important. That's very important indeed. But can you clarify for the sake of having the correct information, how many people are we talking about here? Uh, of course, uh, if you listen to what the the Nigerian Army uh, said uh, exactly uh, 137 uh, uh, children were released, and that is a number. But I can say here, sadly, uh, we, uh, it's only one person that have not returned, and that is a teacher. And of course, uh, that is a fact of the matter. But all the 137 children are simply back. We had an unfortunate incident that uh, the teacher couldn't make it uh, because uh, he had some complications. He was sick. That was what uh, the report we got from the military and uh, security agencies. But the rest of the children, all of them, have come back home separately. New Zans, Lily. Did you hear that? I'm coming to the last statement, too. This guy said... Military told you, this was last night, yesterday, okay, this is not uh, fresh, uh, okay, this is not like today. He said that last night, all right? He said the military told him, number one, he first he said as the governor, eh, that it was just somebody who had no real data. They are mentioned 287. And he, as a governor, he did not want to join issue with them. So he just let it slide. And since that time and now, he had no clue how many children were taken until last night when he said the military told him that they only saw 137. Okay, that they, they confirmed that it's only 137 children they found. And he believed the military. So anybody who is saying anything else, eh, is trying to politicize it. You know Nigerian politicians, every time you ask them or you tell them to do their job, they will tell you you are you you are bullying them. Why are you bullying us? Why are you why are you trying to politicize it? Why are you politicizing this thing? Say, are you mad? We're asking you to do your job. Do your job. And when you don't, mm, then you are called out. Which one is they are politicizing it? You are playing politics incompetence and all of that with the lives of you excuse me with the life of lives of children but, but that is unforgivable nobody should ever forgive that but this is why a lot of us will never forgive all those criminal politicians in nigeria you have no forgiveness for them anywhere here okay because i mean the other part of her should actually be reserved for them the terrorists have been paid and this is how they flex. I got that from TikTok, by the way. To a lot of you who might think that Mayegu likes to exaggerate and exaggerate, they are playing, they are playing Ludo with the lives of your children. And the children of the ones they have been playing with in northern Nigeria deserves to know they will do the same thing in the rest of Nigeria very soon. Your children will be taken from their schools. Okay? And on your behalf, 
they will use your state resources to pay the terrorists. On the TikTok, if you go on TikTok, go and search for the Fulani terrorists or bandits on TikTok. You will see them. There are many there. They are always flexing with the ransom money that you are hearing all this while. Eh? Go on TikTok. They are not hiding it. Because I told you here, I said Nigeria is not looking for them. No security agent is looking for terrorists in Nigeria. Okay? They are only putting up a show once in a while to make all of them just the things. Say, oh, we see a military here, yes, huh? So military see the displays. These guys are not hiding. Okay? They will kidnap people, collect ransom, collect their phones, call the family members, call everybody. Nobody is looking for them. So once they kidnap and they get paid, they will release the children. The Nigeria police may say, oh, we have rescued them, Nalayo. Oh, we have rescued them. The military will tell you, oh, we have rescued them, Nalayo. So if you rescue people from kidnappers, where are the kidnappers? Did you just tell them to continue going or continue their business? Because it's a lie. I'll show you how they have now dressed up the kids. Pop, I mean, you know, prop them up together so as to show that the uh, Kaduna state government rescued them, Nigeria military saved them, and Nigeria government is going to take care of them. Where are those uh, children from, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's that place again? Uh, Kangara, Kankara, Kajuru. Where are those children today? They've used them and dumped them, made money from them, and that was it. The trauma of being uh, children, living children inside forest with uh, terrorists uh, that, will, that, that will rape them, sodomize them inside that same forest. And you come out and you say, their spirit is I. Oh, yeah. May I show you the high spirit of the children? They don't dress them up. Using children in your dirty game. Huh? Yeah, you cannot actually keep the children out of all of this. Ah. Here is what you have to say at the place they organize for themselves to make themselves feel good. See the great thing we have done. We just rescued the kidnapped school children. Huh? See the great job we have done make themselves feel good about themselves i want to also make one observation here before i conclude my own remarks when this incident happened some of us have been very very encouraged with the effort of the security agencies because we are working with them closely and they've they have been, they've been sharing a lot of 
intelligence roles and we are also supporting them with information. That is why we are here today with our children. But I want to also caution our insecurity merchants and complete merchants in Nigeria to be cautious with the utterances. Since the return of my children in the last few two days or oh, yesterday evening when I was able to visit them, a lot of people have been spending a lot of time coming with permutations on how these children were released, what happened. For us in Kaduna, what is more important is the self-returns of our children. We're happy they're here with us. That is more important. And I want us to please continue to support our armed forces and the entire security agencies in our own country. They are doing extremely well. Today, the children are here. For us, they will soon be with their own families and their parents. That is more important. As a government, our most important responsibility is the protection of lives and properties of our citizens. That is why we're here. That is why we're in government. And under my leadership, by the grace of God, Kaduna State Government will continue to prioritize our security because for us is the most important security is the number one agenda of our own government that is why we decided from the beginning not to focus on the issue of politics because security like i've always said is not politics we have to be cautious we should not politicize the issue of insecurity in nigeria and that is the reason why we are very discreet in the way we approach this issue and today we are successful but any attempt to continue to undermine the effort of the security agencies in Nigeria in the name of politics is jeopardizing the lives and properties of our innocent citizens in Nigeria. So I want to caution, particularly the media and some elements within the society, who since the return of these children, they have been coming with some permutations about what happened. How are they returned? In my own opinion, Maybe most of these people are not being happy that these children are back. Because if they are happy, they should celebrate it. That is the most important thing. Just like the families of these children are already celebrating their returns. And Kaduna State Government, we are all happy. Because we had 16 days of sleepless nights. But today, we are happy the children are back. New Zans Lelegi. New Zans Lelegi. Did you hear that? Eh? People have been saying this is is upset that worldwide, especially those who have been following the developments, they can see the handwriting on the wall. You kidnap the children. You pay ransom to terrorists. Terrorists come they flex on social media. This one they pray. The other one they, they count the money. You know, my money, my money too long. It's like a. You know, terrorists saying my money is too long that I have to make a bet from it. Baba, terrorists are on social media. They are following you. You are following them. Sometimes a lot of you don't even know. Go on TikTok. Go on Facebook. Terrorists, Nigerian terrorists are there. They, they, are, they are not hiding their faces. This one they pray. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Inshallah. 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 Rabbi Allah. Arabi Allah, Audu Billah, Mina Shaydan, Rajim Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Ar Rahman, Rahim, Malik Yomidin, Iakan Abu Rayakan Astaim, Ihidina Sirat al Mustaim, Sirat al Ladina, and Amta Alayhim, Gayril Maklubi Alayhim, Warabalin, Amin, Alam Nasharakala Kathadrak, Warabana, Ankozirak, Al Ladi, Ankada Zaharak, Warabana, Lakazikirak, Inna mal usuri sura, fa inna mal usuri sura, fa ida faraga tafan safa ila rabuka faraga. Allahumma salli ala sayyiduna Muhammadin al-Fati al-Mawlik al-Fati. Nathir al-Hakki bil-Hakki wal-Hadi ila siradaka al-Mustajib. Wal-Hadi ila siradaka al-Mustajib. Wa ala alihi haq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Alihakra. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah.
Aisa Varagi Zavanza, Waina Varagi Zavanza, and all of that. Abi, this one is flexing with the ransom money on social media, guys. Money, you can see how they pack the money. Take a look, you will know that a ransom money. So they have to count them. You know, the way you count, the way they, they, don't, they don't pack money the way you take money from the bank, ransom money. No, 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 no. See, ransom money, eh? ransom money, you have to count it. You have to count it in a way that, for example, if you have 1,000 era notes, eh, that is 100,000 era for one bill, 100 pieces, okay? So you have to count it in 10, 10. So when you count 10 out of that 100 pieces, you have to use one to fold one. Then you count another 10, you fold it. You count another, you fold it. Then you have to tag them. To, so it will be easier for the terrorists to count because they are counting in millions, all right? That is what terrorists, that's how they flex in Nigeria. Do you understand? Yeah, people are selling their properties. They are selling their lands. They are going into, you know, into indebtedness just to flee their loved ones, kidnapped by terror. You see, it has become so easy in Northern Nigeria, sure you get, that some of them even, they save money to buy guns. And once they have like two, three guns, they can go out there and kidnap people and collect millions of Naira. Police is not looking for them. DSS is not looking for them. Okay? And they know that. Once you enter their hand, here by near. Here is, uh, you remember this uh, Commodore Taiwo? Eh? The man who told all of us that Nigeria will be Islamized. Eh? It was, uh, was he working for DSS or? You remember this Commodore now? Eh? Intelligence and I also, right? I'll show you. Let me ask from the staff from the governor. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. I was in supply. You don't trust the governor of Delta I State? Do all, I am not home, all of them. Looking for a way forward. It's going to be a very hard nut to crack. The scene you are seeing in recent times has been long time coming. Um, if you recall, um, in this same major Delta, military men were being killed, you know. Let me ask from the staff from the governor. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. I was in supply. You don't trust the governor of Delta I State? Do all, I am not home, all of them. All the governor of the South is even Doe and yeah. all of that? I think the only person I can trust uh, in this country is Zulu of Bono State. Uh, I don't want to talk about those governors. They don't even know why they are the chief security officer of a state. They don't even know. And what did the judge do is to share money and do things. So I don't want to talk about them. Uh, you don't trust they, their competence or their capacity. Let's, let's get it right. Both. They're not competent. And when you're not competent, you don't have capacity. Mention of them that has capacity or that is competent. Or that is there because of the interest of the people that is there to govern. Mention one. I've mentioned Zulu. So don't let's talk about them. Let's look at the issue of Delta. You know, you have the Joy Robo, you have all those. Sure, you know, yeah. I, I used to go on combat patrol in Wari where they will write in their building. This is a uh, Isokoma house. Yeah. Uh, they, they write and all yeah, that was the, the first yeah, They've before. always been having this conversation. And I'm talking about like 1993, 1994. You know, but the other question you are asking, the third question was about, um, that's the last question you asked now. Yeah, I was like fighting across the front. The no. war economy. That's the brilliant. fact that, yeah. do you think that even Ransom was paid in this operation because... Ransom was, was paid. Let me just answer that one. Really? Are you sure? You have proof? Let them, let them debunk it. Let them take me on. The Ransom was paid. In this Kaduna release? Oh, yes. Ransom was paid. And that's, that's another area I don't want to talk about. I asked about, about proof that. anyway. I said, you have proof you know, because of the sake of balancing? I should give you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just for the sake of balancing. Too. No, 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 no. no. There, there's, uh, Ransom was paid. You know, these guys, they took these guys and they said they want one billion. So one day they just woke up and they are so happy. You know, I said, okay, come <laughs> and take the, 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 we are tired of them, come and take them. So, but the issue of two fronts is very, I, I'm talking to Tinubu now. He should not look at what is up. He should not leave, leave this into all those governors because it's politics that are playing there. And they are taking the crude oil and stealing whatever they can get since the government is not doing what they're supposed to do. But Tinubu should pay attention. He cannot afford to fight war on two fronts. It can't. Even the military is not designed usually to fight on two fronts. 
And when you look at what happened in Israel, the Gaza, what the Hezbollah tried to do is to open another front in the north. So at the border of Lebanon, they tried to do that, but the Americans were there and they tried to suppress it quickly, and it, it did not happen. Tinubu should try to douse what is happening. He should try to do dialogue with them. They just need some money, they need some care, they need some attention. And now they are starting, if the military make mistakes by doing the OD episode, uh, then... You think the military should be withdrawn from the Niger Delta now? Uh, should should de-escalate tension from those communities? Yeah, I think at this point, if they've not been able to achieve the operational imperatives or the objectives, if by now, uh, then they should. Looking for a way forward, it's going to be a very hard nut to crack. The scene you are seeing in recent times has been long time coming. Um, if you recall, um, in this same Niger Delta, military men were being killed, you know, uh, in 2005, 2006, 2007, during Obasanjo's time. You remember the OD episode? And when Yarada also came, you know, he was very firm and wanted to stop what was going on. Um, we moving into the Delta Delta time, and it was discovered that most of the things that were happening was mostly political. People that wanted to be governors, senators, were using armed boys to, you know, cause uh, trepidation and fear to uh, their opponents. And after the election, they are often abandoned. And when we went into Delta then we discovered that most of the groups, the renegade groups, were affiliated to one politician or the other. And uh, the president called them to order, and at the end of the day, some of them um, stopped what they were doing, but majority of them refused. Um, on the air, I would like to mention some names that are still in the corridor of power. You know, uh, Alame is has gone, so it's... Thanks so much, Lord. I wanted you to see that, and I wanted you to hear the part uh, uh, where, from his own, uh, you know, from his, from his own uh, experience, right? He strongly believed that indeed the what the point he's trying to make out of that uh, rambling to some extent is that uh, uh, the state governors, when you look at the Niger Delta, the state governors, when you look at them from the northern part of Nigeria as well, right? Majority of them are not really interested in anything, security or whatever. And if they get themselves involved, it's simply on our, well, you know what they are going to make out of it. I heard that uh, somehow, somehow, you know, the the whole Commodore is now possibly like, uh, you know, warming his way to see if uh, Tifnubu will notice him, but let's ignore that. Okay, and let's forge on. Now, forging on mm, is what will now take me back again quickly. So that, uh, you know, the escaped, uh, what do you call them again? The Binance guys, right? Now, uh, like I said, we woke up this morning and the news was that this guy, Nadim, uh, I can't remember his uh, second name, or I can't pronounce that uh, regularly, by the way, Nav Navarajaska or something. But let's just call him Nadim. He was reported to be one of uh, the two executives of Binance that arrived in Nigeria sometimes in uh, January. To come and discuss the issue of uh, Nigerian government banning Binance in Nigeria. So uh, when they arrived in Nigeria, and they were taken straight to the office of uh, the NSA, Rebadu. Now, when they go to the office of the NSA, from what we gathered, Nigeria wanted them to uh, give, I mean, Nigeria wanted access. So their platforms uh, back end their server so that they will get to know those Nigerians who are using the platform or those who have used the platform to steal Nigeria money. Mm -hmm. However, uh, these guys denied that, like, that's not going to happen. Yeah, his name is uh, Anjarwala, Anjarwala, Mr. Uh, Anjanwara, Wala, rather. Uh, thank you very much, by the way, for that. Okay, so somebody sent me something there. Thank you. So the guy was uh, one of the two of those arrested. Okay, so they were locked up, or they weren't taken to the EFCC, who have the resources, I believe, to possibly investigate financial crime. Okay, I want to believe. It was the office of Eribadu. 
that was going to show to the rest of Nigeria how they have caught the people that have made Nigeria Naira weaker, the finance. Then Nigeria came back and said, okay, if you're not going to give us all of that, we're going to find you and billion dollars. So, and you are not going anywhere. So the battle locked them up in a supposed guest house in Abuja. And he, you know, provided uh, guards 24-7 to watch over them. So if they want to leave Nigeria, they have to pay $10 billion fine to Nigeria. But Binance is not playing ball. Since Binance is not playing ball, so the Nigerian government decided to take them to court. So uh, I think it was two days, uh, no, sorry, about three days or so ago, Nigerian court or uh, in Nigerian court, they were charged for uh, four charges of money laundering, funding terrorism, aiding and abetting terrorists, aiding and abetting uh, money launderers, economic dis or something like that. They charged them. So it became like not a big news, you know, people are not really interested in whatever this is no longer news because it's more or less like a fluke anyway. Until last night. So from nowhere, from the blues, right? They said this guy walked, is a Muslim and you know Ramadan is currently ongoing. Nadim told his guards that he wanted to go and pray. And then his guard took him to the nearby mosque. At the same time, it was the time when they were breaking the, the Ramadan fast. So in the spirit of Ramadan, the security guard said they took him to a nearby uh, mosque. But somehow, Nadim disappeared. And they later heard that Nadim is not just British whose British passport is currently with uh, Ribadu in Abuja. He is also Kenyan. But they have no idea how he was able to access his Kenyan passport. And at the same time, how he was able to, uh, I mean, to access a private jet supplied by a, a Middle East airline. And how Nadim possibly got Uber from the mosque in Abuja. And the Uber took him straight to the VIP section of the, uh, the uh, Unamdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. And at the same time, it got cleared. And the, the aircraft, the private jet also got cleared. And Nadim left Nigeria for what they now say is the Middle East. So Nigeria, Ribadu is now acting like their investigation has shown them that some people helped him. And this is what uh, somebody who claimed to be a former DSS member have to say about that he bribed our boys this is very very disappointing you know when i heard it because um number one if the man has been classed as a threat or a, a suspected person for to the country he should have been watch listed you know in fact he would have been taken into custody right from when he entered the country you know, but he came in with a different passport, and then, of course, he was taken to court, and then, of course, he was taken again to a detention center. You know, I don't know the NSC as, uh, you know, whether they have a detention uh, facility. You know, the, 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 the NSC is an advisory body to the president. So we feel that if he felt that that uh, suspect should be remanded, he should have sent him either to the EFCC, his former place, or send it to the DSS to keep until the date of the court. But to keep him in a guest house where he has access to telephones and other, other things, and then arrange him. I don't know who are these people because... Uh, the security people that were looking after him. I don't know who they are. But for them now to even allow him to go and pray, I think uh, there are a lot of loopholes and lapses there. Because if he wants to pray, we have held heads of state in detention. 
and they pray where they eat and live and sleep. So I don't see why this particular guy will be allowed to go to the nearest, the nearest mosque to go and pray, and from there disappears. And then he went through the airport, and the airport does not have him on their watch list. That is strange, because immediately he was arrested, he should have been fingerprinted, and then, of course, put his picture and passports, number everything, to all the land, sea, and air borders. But he beats all that because he knows that maybe he can use money and then left the country. But how, I mean, when you say land, sea, and uh, some people will smile, Nigeria is so corrupt, which I, I regret the day I was born in this country. It's unfair. This is unfair now. This is unfair. Nigeria is so Nigeria is so corrupt, which I, I regret the day I was born in this country. It's unfair. This is unfair now. This is unfair. Nigeria is so This is unfair. Very unfair. Whatever money cannot do, ladies and gentlemen, complete complete this uh, statement. Whatever money cannot do. I know I can hear you. I will read you. More money will do it. And since Pablo Escobar is your president, the drug lord, the vice president of Nigeria is a terrorist, a terrorist sympathizer. Don't 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 say ha ah, as to say I lie. I said your president is a drug dealer. A drug lord. Your president your president is a drug dealer. A drug lord. There is evidence. Your vice president, Sheikh uh, Shetima, is a terrorist. Hello, my wonderful people. As we have finished watching this interesting video, please, I want to see your comment, your contribution, your opinion in the comment section. Like I said earlier, let us do it constructively. Tell me what you think about this uh, video that you have just watched and also about the platform. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please remember to subscribe, put on your notification bell, share this video and remain blessed.